In the last video, we looked at how to link data from an external source into our database. In this instance, we linked data in a spreadsheet. The benefits of that is that the data remains totally separate from the database and can be amended within a spreadsheet environment. But those updates can be seen inside your database. But we saw in the last video, you can't amend the data in the database. This next method we're going to look at is how to actually import the data so it becomes an object in the database but also is no longer linked to the original data source. We do this by importing and that is on the file menu. We drop down to get external data and then across to import. This brings up the import dialog box and of course you can do the normal navigation to find where you've saved your data source. I've saved my data on the desktop for easy access, but it isn't an access database. You can see I can only see access databases at the moment. My data is actually a text file that I want to import. So I need to tell access the different type of file that I'm looking for. So I can click on the drop down and choose. See the wide variety of things you can import from a text file. And there's my text file on the desktop. So we select the file and then click the import button. That starts the import text wizard. And we basically just go through the wizard answering the questions, if you like. The first question is, what is the data in the text file like? Has it been separated by characters such as commas or tabs or spaces? That word delimited means separated by. So is the data, each chunk of data, has it been separated by a comma or a tab? Or are they fixed width? And that means that each field of data is perhaps exactly 10 characters long. Or each field of data exactly 50 characters long. You have to know what the data is in order to be able to make that choice. In this instance, I know that my file has been saved in a delimited format because it's a text file and it's been separated by either a comma or a tab. We click the next button. And this is where we can say exactly how that text has, has been separated out, how it's been delimited. The de access usually picks up the right method. In this instance, it's picked up that the text has been separated by tab stops. If it hasn't, we can choose from a variety of other methods. There's three there, semicolon, comma, and space, but your file could easily have been separated by something else. If that was the case, we can use the other button and insert perhaps the dash key or whatever that symbol is. So let's go back to tab. And my tick box is first row contains field names. If you have a look at the preview, Access doesn't know whether the word date is actually one of the records or not. So we have to tell it to use that as a, as a field name. Depends on the data whether or not that would be true. On my data, I know that that first row, that first row is not a record. It is the column titles, the field names. So I'll leave the tick in and progress through the wizard. Where do we want to store the data? In a new table or an existing table that we can select from tables that are already in the database? Just be warned, this does not add data to that table. It will totally overwrite the data in the table. So you have to be pretty certain of what you are doing when you want to use an existing table. So I'm selecting in a new table so we can create a brand new table for this data and progress through the wizard. This allows us to look at each field in turn and see what its properties are. So we've got the date field selected, we've got the name of the field, whether or not it's indexed and what the data type is. Now this is Access's best guess at the situation but you can override it. For example, if you want the data to come in in text format rather than date format, we can simply change the formatting here. 
to text. You can decide whether or not it should be indexed or not to import that particular field at all. You can select each field in turn, making the necessary changes. You can even change the name of the field. And that will be reflected when we import the data in the field name. So you work through your fields in that way, making any changes you need to, and then progress through the wizard. The next step is about primary keys. Access always wants a primary key in any table. It hasn't picked one up in this raw data, so it says I'll create a, a primary field for you and I'll call it ID and I'll label it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be um, an auto number field. If that is the wrong field and you've already got one within your data, you can choose your own and choose which field that primary key is in. Or you can choose not to have a primary key at all. And that's what I want to do for this data. No primary key. Progress through the wizard and give your data a meaningful name. And then finish. People often think when they get pop-up windows that there's an error. Read the message carefully. This is not an error, it's just an information that says the importing has been finished. So we can click on OK. That happens in Access more often than any other application I know. It just says, are you sure? So we can see my new table there called Test Results from Text File. If I double click on that table, it's just a table like any other. We can go into design view and alter the properties of the fields in that way. So that is importing. I'll just run through that again very, very quickly. We do file, get external data, import. Choose the text file or the type of file that we want to use and then progress through the wizard, making the correct choices as you go along. Making any changes to the fields as you see fit, as you go through, and then progress through the wizard. Decide whether or not you want a primary key, sensible name, and then finish. Acknowledge the information that's been given to you. This one actually says not all of your data was successfully imported. I did that on purpose and I'll explain why in a second. But we do have errors and I'll show you how we see those errors. We click on OK. And I can see there's the table I've imported, but it's also created a new table detailing the errors on the import. If I open that, it's telling me there was an error importing the score and the status fields. Score and status. Let's have a look at the actual table of results and you can see there's no information for score and status. And that was purely because when I imported the table, quickly going through this again, when I was working with my options here to change the field types, I changed score and status to unrecognizable ones. They should have been um, numbers and I changed them to text, or they should have been text and I changed them to numbers. So you've got to be careful when you change the data type. So if you do change that and you get errors, you can have a look at them and try to decide what to do. Sometimes it won't matter, sometimes it will. That's importing data. The data is a live table now. It's not linked to the original. You can make any changes as you would in any other table in Access.